Here we are on the internet. You missed some good shit already. Uh, oh, Tom Wade asks you, Steve, what did you think of Woody Harrelson's portrayal of you in Game Change? I thought it was terrific. No, I mean, it was, like, it was a very, very strange experience. Um, but I got to know Woody. He's a really nice guy. He's and, a great um, guy. He's a great guy. And You don't know him like I do. And uh, he's, a, <laughs> uh, he's, a, he's, just, he's a great guy. I mean, he's such a talented actor. I love his movies. And, and if he can't ever uh, do the next uh, Game Change, you would step in for him? Yeah, absolutely. Not. Okay. Jim, what would you say to people who claim Politico has a conservative bias? A conservative bias? I don't... We get it, we get it on both sides. People, when you're in the media, regardless what paper people say, you're from the left or you're from the right. Our whole thing has always been to be down the middle. I think there's a plenty of noise on the left and the right. What there isn't a lot of, and it gets to the Baltimore paper, it gets to what's happening in New Orleans, there's not a lot of just reporting, just fact out reporting. We now have 200 some employees of those 130 are involved in the editorial process. It's all because of the name, obviously, very focused on governance in politics. And there, you know, if you are full of it, like, people are going to know. Follow-up question, sort of. How do you feel about the fact that New Orleans will now be the largest U.S. city without a daily newspaper? That's your city. Well, Because they went to three days a week, right? The Times, the New, York, the New Orleans Picayune, didn't they go to... Right. I mean, they're online, uh, but they're going to a printed paper. Uh, Three days yeah, a week. Exactly. I mean, that's crazy because there are seven days in a week. Well, I'm not, I'm not particularly wedded to the idea of newsprint. Uh, I, I feel like cutting down trees and throwing them on people's doorsteps is an anachronism. It has been for some while. You know, the, the delivery system is going to be digital. What, I'm, what I am wedded to is the idea of a newsroom, is the idea of, uh, of paid professional journalism, which you know, I don't believe the amateur hour can replace what... Uh, high-end right. journalism is and should be. You're not calling him the amateur hour, are you? No, I, I no. He, being, online is, is being online is is no. Being online, being in print, that's not the issue. The issue is, if we're going to digital, can you create enough of a revenue stream right. to pay the reporters yeah. to cover the beats, to have a beat structure, so that there's some schnook covering the zoning board for right. long enough, so that when they slip something in the agenda, and they're going to put a strip, uh, a strip joint next hey, to hey. next to your, not that it's a bad thing. But when they're going to put a strip joint next to the elementary school, you know it in advance before it starts getting built. You know, everyone thinks... The Don't wreck the plans Christine and I have for after okay. the show. <laughs> now, this is a question for you. If you believe in limited government, Christine, why should the government intervene on social issues like gay marriage and women's reproductive health? <laughs> I'm sure you've answered said, that one before. Right, huh? I've always said on those issues that they're states, state issues. Um, and on the issue of... How does that change it? I mean, it's still about the government, whether it's a state or federal level, and... and because it comes to determining um, when you have your rights infringed upon. The person who decides that should be someone who is a part of the community and who's going to be held accountable to those decisions. Wait, wait, wait. So, <laughs> no, I mean, I, accountability. I have a whole chapter in my book called The Freedom Food Chain. I don't care who the person is infringing my rights. I mean, I... No, because, <laughs> well, 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 the reality is there is a freedom food <laughs> chain. And this is what sets me apart as a conservative from a libertarian. Because I do believe right. that the government should have some laws. I consider myself a limited government conservative. Yeah. I, I don't understand the people in our party who think it is okay for the government to mandate a medical procedure to a woman. I mean, I... <laughs> well, How are they mandating a medical procedure to a you woman? Have, you have law after law in this country and well, state legislators, these efforts, you know, I'm pro-life, but, you know, if it's a legal procedure in the country, how does the state mandate an invasive medical procedure well, well, the state doesn't the mandate it. relationship. The state doesn't mandate it. Right. Many As states are trying fact. to. But, I mean, the, the Democrats are trying to say that by their moves this past week to, to unlimit all restrictions on this very but, risky and procedure. And if I could, like, actually come in on your side here for a yeah. minute. Like, see, I always separate abortion with the other social rights issues that, that the conservatives talk about, like gay rights. Like, to, to be against gay rights, to me, is just stupid. Because it just comes from the Bible. I, I support but to gay be, But you, I always say, you do not have to be religious to be against abortion. I mean, I'm pro-choice, but I get it that there are people who believe, because it's undeniably a life that's, it's not a life that's born yet, but it's undeniably becoming one. I get that that is an issue. You do not have to, you mean atheist and be pro-life. I've covered the Baltimore City Council, and I've even had a little bit of a hand in covering the Maryland State Legislature. And if you think, like, the, 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 yeah. the, the intellectual power of those bodies is in some way 
superior or more nuanced <laughs> than, say, the Congress of the United States. I mean, well, I've met so a lot of congressmen. That, that's just it nothing is, but... It couldn't be lower. That's just nothing but... I don't have the it's, stomach to inter interfere right. in this but, person's well, life. So I I'm going to pass I don't understand. the buck. Well, you can't have a one-size-fits-all approach to But I don't understand policy. this basic philosophy that we can do things on a state level. Like, this is the whole argument with Mitt Romney and Romney Care. Oh, it worked in Massachusetts, where people have gallbladders, but federally it wouldn't work <laughs> because in Kentucky they don't. I mean, people get sick the same in every state. <laughs> people have abortions or not in every state the same. Why does it work on a state level and well, not because, a federal? Well, first of all, we have the 10th Amendment. Amendment, and the Tenth Amendment uh, protects state sovereignty. So, well, you know, we, the Tenth Amendment because says. our founders understood that accountability but that is what is going really to preserve our question. freedom. I mean, the Tenth but Amendment says everything not enumerated specifically to the federal government to goes the back to the states. Right, and these certain things are not enumerated but, but what about in the, the Constitution. Defense, what about the Defense of Marriage Act, but, then, which would seem to be an abrogation of the Tenth Amendment because marriage has always been defined at a state level. Right, I agree. And that's why we have it, because when it comes to that issue, the states can define a civil union, a domestic partnership, and then the states can determine how that is enacted. And what we see happening all across the country is that issue of same-sex marriage pits the First Amendment with the Tenth Amendment. Let me ask you and for, for example, in cases like New Jersey, there are churches that have lost their tax-exempt status because they don't have civil union couples and things like that. And you can applaud because you think that's a good thing, but the church has the First Amendment right to, to define its own religion and define marriage according to its religion. And the Tenth Amendment says the states will determine how these things are defined. And if you don't like there what's go. going on in New Jersey, <laughs> then you become Tenth a part Amendment of that. Man. What would you have done during the... Read it and weep, Tenth <laughs> Amendment. What would you have done during the Civil Rights Movement? <laughs> so what would you have done during the period when the Civil Rights Movement was emerging? You talked about accountability at states' rights level. You needed a federal government that was going to allow people to a fight meddling and federal their government. Right. No. <laughs> this there was so many. Union this was we... this was one. The civil rights war was won on the state level. Civil rights no. were was won, won the by it was people, not, those no. were not by US individuals, no. by individuals getting up and no. speaking. I mean, up. No, it just no, didn't happen overnight. You, must know you this. needed a federal government to take on Bull Connor. No. The civil rights no, movement no. Well, started when the Republican I Party that, I was, was the, founded to end but you, slavery. I thought that was the 82nd Republicans Airborne. ended slavery. I thought the 82nd no, Airborne was I mean, you, you've Rock. seen that yeah. famous yeah. Norman Rockwell painting yeah. where the tru where the guy is yeah. escorting yeah. a little black child. Into federal the, troops. That's a federal troop. I mean, Kennedy, that's what cost well, the Democrats. Well, then you're talking about different things. She talked about the civil the federal government, well, one, of the, 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 one of the enumerated powers of, of the federal government is to pr protect <laughs> its defense, both foreign and domestic right. threats. In that sort of situation, it's a domestic threat. You're talking about a whole movement that truly started when the Republican Party was founded to end slavery. And it was the Democrats. That's true. The Republicans did end slavery. You got to give that to Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> And the Republicans have been strongly behind the black man ever since. <laughs> All right, we gotta go. Thank you very much, everybody. Real Time with Bill Maher. Ask Bill and his guests your questions right after the show at HBO.com.